Good morning, Facebook family, friends, my faithful, loyal YouTube subscribers. Today is Wednesday. Wednesday, August the 9th, the year is 2007. And this is my Nigga Bill series. Welcome to Nigga Bill. All right, so when I moved to Atlanta, Atlanta in 1989, I had no clue what Atlanta would be like. Uh, I grew up in Gary, Indiana. We had left Gary when I was about 14. 13, 14 years of age, moved to Michigan, then on to Ohio, where I graduated high school in Cincinnati, Ohio. And my mother had got this, I don't know where she got this idea that Atlanta, Atlanta she had heard Atlanta was a great place for black people. So my mother packed up a U-Haul and she moved to Atlanta um, from Cincinnati, Ohio before I graduated. And after I graduated high school, I moved down to Atlanta. Now. I wasn't sure what to expect when I moved to Atlanta. All I know is I was very disappointed because I did not want to leave Cincinnati, Ohio, a place I, I had got grown, came, became very comfortable with. Um, I was coming to terms with my sexuality. I was just really coming out. I had made some great friends. And all of a sudden, I was being uprooted and moved to um, Atlanta. So, Coming to Atlanta was an eye opener for me. As a, as a now, uh, I would say an adult, I was 18 years of age. But for the first time in my life, I was around a lot of black folks, and I was around a lot, a lot of gay black people. That was a shocker. I didn't even know gay blacks existed in large numbers. So getting coming to Atlanta, which I affectionately call Niggerville. I learned a lot about niggas. There's a whole lot of niggas living in Atlanta, Georgia. And that's why I call this place Niggerville. I'm going to tell you why. I first got to Atlanta, I didn't realize how dangerous a city could be. Until a nigga came up to me one night. I was sitting outside the Redis nightclub, and he pulled out a shot of... A, 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 a shot a rifle or something, he held it to my head and demanded that I give him my watch, my shoes, and something else. He took my Air Jordans and some other stuff from me. Could have got killed over some damn Air Jordans outside a damn club, sitting in the car with a friend of mine who quickly ran away. After once he saw what was going on, he ran. He he ran down the alley. It was funny. So I learned something about Niggerville. They will kill your ass over nothing in this damn place. While living in Niggerville, you have to be very careful. Even when you go to the grocery store, by the time you park your car and get out your car, you got all these niggas begging for money. I don't care where it is. It can be in the middle of the heart of Buckhead or down in the damn ghetto. There's always going to be some nigga standing there begging for some damn money. So once you get inside the grocery store and get your shopping done, and get back out to your car. It's assuming you safely get into the grocery store to get your shopping done. I know people who didn't make it inside the grocery store who got shot in the parking lot at 5 o'clock in the afternoon at a major Kroger grocery store with thousands of people around. So once you get inside the grocery store and get your shopping done, and you line with all these niggas paying for all this shit with the EBT cards, which is, you'll find out why later on. You, well, you get back out safely to your car, assuming that your car is still parked where you left it and ain't no nigga stole it. You got a lot of variables. You get an obstacle to your nigga bill that you got to go through. It's like a, like a video game, a dangerous video game. There are obstacles all around you here in nigga bill. I've also learned a lot about nigga being in nigga bill. You got a lot of people in nigga bill with all these fancy degrees, but they can't read a book. How could you graduate from high school, but you, you cannot fill out a job application? Most of the niggas here in Niggerville cannot read nor write. But they drive in fancy cars, but they can't structure a sentence. I have a lot of, I have a, there are tons and tons of people moving here to Niggerville. This has been going on since I moved here in 1989. Now, years ago, when you moved to Niggerville, you, you could find you a decent paying job. Them days are long gone. Most folks moved to Niggerville will be sitting around here waiting six months to 
six to 18 months or maybe two years before you find a decent paying job where you could pay your bills. If other, if other, Assuming they stay here in Niggerville that long. Most folks, when they get in Niggerville, they pack up and leave. They realize, ain't no jobs here in Niggerville, so they pack their shit in here for back to where they, from where they came from. Niggerville is not what you think it is. It's a place where you will starve. And you'll end up at the Peachtree Peach, 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 Peach Street Homeless Shelter if you ain't got your shit together. If you don't know how to hustle, don't come to Niggerville because you're going to be in trouble. You better learn how to braid hair, wash cars, cut grass, do something, all with your college degree hanging on the wall. Because that's where it's going to be hanging at while you're searching for a job here in Niggerville. Too many niggas here. Thousands of niggas here. They ain't going to hire you niggas and put y'all inside no company. Mm -mm. Can you imagine Coca-Cola putting a thousand niggas in there? Nah, they wouldn't get no Coke sold. Matter of fact, they may not get no Cokes made. So they realize that they can't have all y'all sitting up there on the payroll. They got a business to run. So they let five of y'all in at $10 an hour. But the nigga real. But y'all want to be here. You got niggas moving here every day. The nigga be with a big smile on their face. They so happy to be here in, in, in Hotlanta. They just don't know. They won't be here long. They'll be packing back up that same U-Haul they packed to come down here and head back to wherever they came from. A lot of people can't make it here in Niggerville, assuming they don't get shot and killed and carjacked while driving down Peachtree Street. Niggerville's a rough place. You ain't a real nigga, you ain't gonna make it. You got to have some real heart to live in this damn town. I'm talking seriously. Because the niggas will eat your ass alive here. In Niggerville, you got big, strong, big-ass niggas like me running around these streets, but they all gay. Every last one of them. And they bottoms too. So you got to understand what's going on down here, Niggerville. If you're a black woman, God bless your soul. What you hell you what the hell you doing here, Niggerville? Get your shit. You can go work any damn way in America. They have black what black women can go work any damn where. You can go to any city around the world and get a good paying job. Why would you come here? Why would you sit here in this hellhole? Why would you sit in this bullshit? Why would you remain in Niggerville? Go someplace else where you can have you a good life and find you a decent man that you can marry and have some children with. But you don't want to shed your man here in Niggerville with all these women and men in this city. Because that's what's going to happen. There's a whole lot of sharing going on over here. You don't want to be involved in that shit. I, 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 you, Niggerville is a place where the average man is shared between Five punks and ten women. Is that what you want to be involved in? I know I don't. Niggerville is a place where you got ten million single mamas here. Dad is nowhere to be found. Where are these men? Raising these children alone. Niggerville is a city where you got a whole lot of black men here. With multiple women, with multiple children, and they ain't even brought them kids a, a roll of toilet paper. And the school system started school roll, roll around. And these kids are, 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 are these poverty stricken children, barely have clothes to go back to school. You don't want to live in Niggerville. It ain't what you think it is. You turn on that TV and you see all this fancy, smashy shit going on. You think this is a pretty city. For them white folks it is. And for a few black folks it is. But for the average nigga in Niggerville, it ain't. This is a poverty-stricken place. It's a rough place. Where the jobs are few and far in between. Where you'll be lucky to get paid $11.50 an hour. You won't have any insurance. You get sick, you end up at Grady Hospital. Who wants to live in this poverty and despair for years? Niggerville ain't a great place. It's a horrible place, truth be told. You don't want to come down here and try to live in Niggerville. This is awful. It's not good. The STD rates here are sky high in Niggerville. They don't use condoms here in Niggerville. They don't even know what that shit is. You got gunnery, STDs, all, gunnery, syphilis, HIV, all this shit running around here. Nobody gives a damn about that shit. They don't care. 
This is Niggerville. They don't give a shit about nothing. Niggerville is a dangerous place. You don't want to raise children here in Niggerville. You don't want your children to grow up in this environment. Take your children someplace else. Your children may not live living down here in this environment. A few children survive. A few of them make it out of Niggerville okay. A few of them make it into college and going with their life. A few. And I mean a few. Let's just be realistic here. The vast majority of the little nigglets that leave here, live here in Niggerville will be headed straight to the Georgia prison system where they'll, do the rest of their, where they'll live the rest of their lives for heinous crimes that they've committed against the other niggas here in Niggerville. It's a dangerous place here. These teenagers will kill you. These little nigglets that live here in Niggerville will kill your ass dead over a 50-inch flat-screen TV that's five years old that you've been hanging on your wall that don't even work. You just got up there for decorations because you ain't had the money to replace it yet. These niggas here are insane. You don't want to be involved with these niggas in Niggerville. It's not what you think it is. It's a horrible place. With a bunch of smiling, bojangling niggas who will do your ass in in a heartbeat. Your co-workers, your friends, the people that you think that you know here in Niggerville hate your motherfucking ass. They hate you because you got a smile on your damn face and they trying to figure out what you so damn happy about. And they over there fucking miserable. You don't want to live here in Niggerville. It'll change you, make you tough, hard, evil, bitter. Go back over to white land. It's clean and pretty. Yeah, them white folks can't stand your motherfucking ass. Matter of fact, them white folks hate your motherfucking ass. But at least they won't shoot you dead while you're trying to take groceries into your home. At least they won't carjack your ass while you're driving up the street from your house. In Niggerville, they grab up a gun and shoot everybody. Just shootings every day. They don't make any sense the type of violence that take place here in Niggerville. It's uncalled for. It is dangerous. And it makes no sense. The violence that happens here in Niggerville is deadly. I was sitting on my porch just two days ago. I had eight shots back to back to back to back. And I thought, I know they made fireworks. They were gunshots. And sure enough, another nigga got shot here in Niggerville. Shot and killed. He didn't survive. He was. Here's the funny part. He got shot and killed. Right outside the police station. Yeah, Niggerville is a deadly place. They'll shoot you dead outside the police station. You think you'd be safe over there amongst them folks? Mm -mm, don't work that way. Yeah, Niggerville is not what you think it is. There's so many people want to move here to Niggerville. They all flocking here. Everybody thinks this is a great place. They bring in their grandchildren. They bring in their families. They buy homes here. They set themselves up for failure. Why would you come here? Why would you come here without a job? Why would you come here thinking that you're gonna find a job? Why would you come here thinking I'm going you gonna why would you risk it all to get to a city where there are no opportunities? Are there are little few opportunities that are here. There are ten thousand niggas waiting in line for that one opportunity. You know, what is going on here? Why do black folks continue to come to this city? I don't get it. Every day I meet new niggas. They come from everywhere. Every day. None of them are employed. None of them have jobs. But they've come here and signed a lease for an apartment that's 1200 a month or more. How do you pay for this? Or do you have a savings account? Nigga, don't you know that savings going to run out when you don't find no job? Did you not do your homework? Did you ask anybody what the job market was like? Oh, you just assumed it was good because they're building buildings here. Do you know how to go work on one of them building sites? Can you lay brick? Can you do plumbing? Can you do electrical? Can you do concrete work? That's your best bet for a fucking job. Go help them build one of them damn high rises, the buildings, the apartments they're building all over the shitty ass city. Go see if they're high your ass up there. I don't see a lot of niggas on them job sites. I find it kind of odd. Here in Niggerville, niggas don't work. And that's the sad part. Where are the opportunities? 
where are all the good paying jobs? Why are so many people here in Nigelville struggling with degrees and education? What are we doing wrong? There's too many niggas here. We don't own nothing. We don't niggas don't own shit. You go through these nigga neighborhoods, every store over here is owned by some Asians. You'd be hard pressed to find a black owned business in a black neighborhood. They don't seem to exist. I've looked for them. Because I support them. The few that I can find. The Niggerville is not a happy place. Because after a while living here, you become bitter and angry and mad. Because you wonder, you're stuck. Now you're trying to figure out how to get the fuck out of here. How do you get out of here when you've depleted all your money? And you've been stuck here for a few years. Mired. Stuck. And begin to lose hope. I've seen this. I know a lot of hopeless niggas here. Who should have left the line a long time ago. Because they don't know how to hustle and survive here. You can hustle. You can survive here. You can hustle here. Nails, skills. There's a lot of shit that you can hustle here in this town to buy. But if you don't have that hustle, if it, if it, if hustling ain't in you, you gonna be a hungry nigga. And ain't nothing like a hungry nigga in Niggerville. Cause you gonna be one of them folks going down to the food stamp office to get an EBT card. And they give you two hundred bucks, or how many people in your family give you that much money per month now? Everybody I know has an EBT card. Because I don't know very few, many people who are working. The few people I do know who are working have been here for years. And I mean 15, 20 plus years. The ones who got here late in the past few years are struggling. Some have jobs. Some have come here and found jobs. Some, but they knew they knew, they knew somebody who let them in through the front door. That's how they got that damn job. Because if, if you a nigga not in the know, your ass is going to be one broke nigga. You got to know somebody who can let you in there and get you a damn job in Niggerville. I don't care if you got a degree from Harvard. It's worthless here. If you don't know somebody, or if you ain't white. Now, white folks live a different life here in Niggerville. Yeah, they do. They live a wonderful life. They live a wonderful life all over America. Have always, for centuries, decades. It's the niggas that suffer here in Niggerville. Most of it is at our own doing, though. You don't move someplace and not have some type of work lined up. You don't move someplace thinking you're going to find something when you get there. You don't move someplace with there 10,000 niggas standing in line for a damn job. What is the purpose? What's so special about you, nigga? They're going to let you in. Times are tough here in this town and getting tougher. But people are still flocking here. They're still building apartments here. They're still building homes and townhouses. People are selling their homes up north and retiring to Atlanta. Bringing their entire families here. The school systems are horrible here. The school systems are some of the worst schools you can imagine here in Niggerville. They're not teaching these kids shit here in Niggerville. The schools need to be bombed and shut down. But you got a church on every kind of nigga real. Niggas are praying all day and screaming to Jesus. They just love some Jesus here, nigga real. They love them on every corner. You, you will literally find a church on every corner here, nigga real. Big ones, big, pretty brick churches built in the last few years. Thousands of people parking lots packed and jammed. Filled with people. Some of the poorest people you ever meet. And they're praying for a miracle, hoping. Niggas on their knees in Niggerville praying for a miracle to happen. That ain't going to happen. Don't get me wrong. There are some people here who are successful. There are, there are some niggas here in Niggerville who got it going on. But there are a few. And they're few and far in between. You can go through neighborhoods and see some beautiful homes in Niggerville. People paying their part, their mortgages, paying their bills, and the homes are well maintained. But those neighborhoods are very few. When I mean, you compare it to the rest of the city that's living half the cities in poverty, 
more than half the niggas living in Niggerville are living in poverty. You must understand this. They're living under the poverty. You, you, these people are making 10, 15, under $20,000 a year. You got a lot of people making that type of money here. How can you survive? And they have children. How can you feed them? They have rent. So it's, it's just it's just a sad situation here. And this has been going on for years. This is 2017. I moved here in 1989. The situation has gotten worse. It has not gotten better in Niggerville. It has gotten much worse. But you can't tell by the pretty buildings they build it. Although, when you go into these black areas on the south side of town, the nigger side of town, they ain't building shit. So that should tell you something. Ain't nothing happening on that side of town. Other than white folks moving in and renovating houses and moving their asses in there. Because it's cheaper than living on the north side of town. They better come live next to you niggas. They figure this will be cheaper and you won't be that long. Yeah, gentrification is working here in Niggerville. To push the niggas out. Maybe that's a good thing. I don't have a problem with gentrification. I've seen these neighborhoods improve. I've seen these poverty-stricken, nigger-filled neighborhoods with deadly niggers pack up and leave. And the neighborhood changes. And now you can go to the grocery store and not have to worry about people begging for money. Now you can go to the grocery store in some of these neighborhoods and your car is still where you left it at when you come back out. And you can safely put your groceries in there and go back home and safely unload your groceries into your home all without a nigga trying to kill you. That's a blessing. I don't mind justification. Because it forced a lot of these po niggas out to go someplace else. Where? I have no clue. But you can't have all these po niggas surrounding together. Now that's going to change over the next... 10, 15, 20 years, I probably won't be around to see it. Hopefully, I won't be around to see it. I pray for it. I will not be around to see it. But they're going to get these poor niggas up out of here. And the city is becoming progressively white. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I found it sad that you have a city filled with black people but very few opportunities for them. Because they're trapped with no way out. It's concerning to me. And it's been like this forever. And now it's changing because the black folks are being pushed out. That's the only reason why it's changing. Nothing has changed. They're being pushed up out of here. And they're going someplace else to live. So Niggerville won't be so filled with niggas in a little while. One day you'll come to Niggerville and there won't be no niggas in Niggerville. None. Nowhere to be found. I hope I'm not offending you all. I'm just telling you about what I've seen living here in Atlanta. A city people seem to think all over the world is this great place for black people. That it's a black mecca you can come here, survive, and thrive. The lies I hear about this town astound me because I've lived here for 30 years. Anyway, I'm going to finish sipping on my coffee. It's 10 o'clock in the morning. I got to deal with some niggas today. Life goes on in Niggerville. If you like my videos, click like, share them with family members and friends. I can't wait to read your comments. Tell me about your experiences here in Niggerville. Are there other Niggervilles in, in other places? Is your city a Niggerville? I'd like to know. Anyway, today it is Wednesday, August the 9th. The year is 2017. Get up and do something productive with your life. Don't just sit back on the front porch here in Niggerville and expect a miracle to happen. You got to make it happen. Get up and hustle and do something productive. I'm out of here. 
Enjoy your Wednesday.